Good afternoon, my students. Welcome to another week on GST 1 to 1 Use of Library, Study Skills, and ICT. My name is Master Osera Da Wilson. I'm from Library Department. This course will be taken by six different lecturers, three from ICT and three from Library Department. I am from library department because I'm a librarian by profession. Today we'll be looking at a very wonderful topic titled library resources. And, and on my course outline, I have two topics I'll be looking at. One, concept of library resources and identification and explanation on the types of library resources. However, before we look at this topic, library resources, I want us to start from the scratch and have an in-depth understanding about what the library is all about. I believe from my other colleagues that have been taking you, they've been giving you definition of library because it is the library that will give you an insight to understanding what a library resource is all about. Library is a place set aside or a building with adequate space for reading that houses information resources, book and non-book materials, or printed and non-printed materials. These materials are selected, acquired, catalogued, and classified by professional librarians for users to enable them to satisfy their information need. From the definition, you can see that the library is a storehouse of knowledge. It houses information resources. And those information resources are known as printed and non-printed material. These printed materials are also called documented and non-documented materials. These documented and non-documented materials are also referred to as well books and non-book materials. All these materials, they are carefully selected, they are acquired, cataloged and classified by a professional librarian. It is not just any hard person who comes there to acquire this material, to select this material. It is done by a professional. For my colleague, I know you've been taught what is cataloging and classification, and he also taught you the types of classification. If you look at this definition, it will be bringing a lot of things we'll be learning in this class. The first one I want you to understand here is information resources. That is to say, the library is a storehouse for knowledge. The library houses knowledge, information resources. And they can be in two formats, which is what? Book and non-book materials. And these book and non-book materials are also called printed and non-printed materials. And they are also called documented and non-documented material. After knowing this, another key thing from the definition you should understand is that word selected. Materials in the library needs to be selected because it is not all kinds of material that are brought to the library that the library accepts. Because it is not a, a storehouse or a waste area. It is a house that houses intellectual knowledge that needs to satisfy the information needs of users because as user comes to the library they come with an expectation and that expectation is for them to get the right information that is why users of the library they use library as a trusted access point where they can get reliable and authentic information so if they don't get that rightful information they've come to look for, they will not be happy because the library itself has a goal, has a law that guides it. The library has laws that it operates on. The library has five main laws. 
The first one is book are for use. The second one is every reader is our book. The third one is every book is reader. The fourth one is the library is a growing organism. And the fifth one is do not waste the time of the library users. So if these materials are not carefully selected, they'll become waste and it is not going in line with the law of library science that says book are for what are for use. That is to say, every material selected in the library must be used. If these materials are not being used, the library is not fulfill, fulfilling its goals. No matter how beautiful a library may look like, if the resources of the library is not being used, it is a waste. It is a waste. It is just, it is just fancy in making. So we'll look at acquire. The next key was there from the definition. You understand that somebody can select a particular thing, but does not mean he will buy it. The same thing too in the library. There are some certain information resources that the librarian might select. But he has to look at priority list, the most important one that will satisfy his immediate environment. Who are the what? Who are the users? So materials have been acquired after they have been carefully been selected. Another key thing is cataloging and classified. In the library, materials are being cataloged and classified. Catalog in the sense that there is a list, a comprehensive list that gives you the bibliographic details of all the information resources in the library. You don't need to go ahead and scatter. The library is well organized. The other keyword there is classif classified by a professional librarian. Classified means classification in the sense that materials are separated and arranged according to their likeness and separating them according to their differences. Book in chemistry are kept in one side for chemistry students, books on biology one side, books on mathematics one side, books on history one side. Why? To enable users to retrieve their information timely and fast as possible. Because one of the laws says that do not waste the time of a library user. So if a user comes to the library, he or she cannot locate a particular library resource at a particular time, you are wasting the time of the library users. That is why you see all these key words are what makes up the definition of the library. So with this, you can understand that the library house, houses resources in other words you can agree with me that resources refer to what information bearing materials information bearing materials that is any material in the library that contain information that the library uses to satisfy the information need of users are referred to as library resources it is the library resources that enable the library to satisfy the information needs of users. In order for the library to satisfy the information needs of users, they should have the relevant and adequate information resources. That is in the need of what? Users. It is the resources that makes the library powerful and attractive. Yes. It is these resources that the library has that makes it what powerful and what attractive. Because every user believes that once they get to the library, their information need will be satisfied. So what then is library resources in my definition I'm giving to you? Library resources are the information bearing material that enable the library to fulfill its goals. I've told you earlier, but I'm giving you another clear definition. Library resources are the information bearing materials that enable the library to fulfill its goals of meeting the information needs of its users. So, ma, my students, if a user's information needs is being satisfied, it is the joy of the librarian. It gives us a greater joy because one of the law of Raganathan states that every book is reader. 
The books are not just there for waste, they are meant for library users to utilize them. So the library resources are those information-bearing materials that enable the library to fulfill its goals of meeting the information needs of its users. Therefore, it collects resources in various sizes, formats, and over a period of time. The library collects information resources in different formats, in different sizes, to satisfy the information need of users. Inyadev and Saula in 2006 stressed that the strength of every library lies in its resources and information service to the people. Yes, I said it earlier on. It is the resources that the library has that enables the library to satisfy the information need of the user. My fellow students, if you visit the library today, which I believe after this class, you should be a friend of the library. You should visit the library at all times because these resources are meant for you. These resources are there to satisfy your information need. You agree with me that if you visit the library today and you are looking for a particular information, take for cognizance information on chemistry and they are giving you information on robo and linguistics. You agree with me that you will not be happy. The information you are looking for that is supposed to satisfy that information in that quest that brought you to the library has not been satisfied. That is why I say that the strength of every library lies in its resources and the information services to the people. To this end, professional librarians continue to strive to collect, to store, organize, and disseminate all forms of recorded knowledge to satisfy both their present and, present and future information needs of all users. We select and acquire materials not just for present users. We also select materials for future users also because there is tendency that the university is growing because one of the law of library science says that the library is a growing organism in the sense that its resources tend to grow. That is, if you know the library with 10,000 resources this year, next year, the library is not supposed to have 10,000 resources. It should grow in resources. Also in manpower, also in staff also. There should be what? Increment. That is what that law is telling us about. Now, let's look at types of library resources. <clears throat> with this in-depth explanation I've given to you on the meaning and definition of library resources, let's look at the types of library resources. Remember, from my early definition, I told you that the library resources are in two formats. They can be in book and non-book materials, and they are also called printed and non-printed materials. So I want to look at some of these examples of what these library resources in the library. So when you visit the library, you will be able to make use of these words, resources. Because the essence of this course is for every student, staffs, community users of the library to be able to navigate around the library and make use of its resources. That is it. As a good student, you should be able to make use of the library. You should be able to know every sections of the library. That is why I tell students, and I keep on telling you today, that show me your library and I will tell you the kind of university you are attending. Because it is the duty of the library to house information resources that will build the capacity of students and staffs of that university. So let's look at some of these resources that are available in the library. Number one include books. When you visit the library as a student, as a staff, or whoever that visits the library, one of the library resources you see is what books. And what is a book? A book is an information resource that is binded by two cover pages that have 49 pages and above. That is to say, for any material, for any information material, I'm talking to you now like a professional because I've taught you what a library resource is. Any information bearing material. 
So any information bearing material that is binded by two cover page that has 49 pages and above is referred to as what? A book. Then this will come to your mind, sir. What of if it is less than 49 pages? If it is less than 49 pages, it is referred to as a pamphlet, which is another example of library resources. So any information bearing material that has less than 49 pages is referred to as what? Pamphlet. Another library resource you see in the library is referred to as what? Newspaper. You have your what? Your newspaper. Even if you don't want to read our books, there are newspapers there. There are newspapers that contain information. You are agree with me in class that newspaper on a daily basis contain different information that elaborate that elaborates your consciousness. So you should visit the library to read newspaper, which is a very good example of library resources. Another one is journal. When you come to the library, you will see journals. You also see cartographic materials, materials that have been duplicated in the library. So now let's look at small explanations of these resources. According to UNESCO, which I've told you earlier on, UNESCO defined a book as a bound non-periodical publication having 49 or more pages, exclusive of cover pages written by a single author or more published and made available to the public. That is to say, any information bearing material that has 49 pages and above is referred to as what? As a book. Then another word you'll be seeing from this definition is an author. Who is an author will come to our mind. An author is the intellectual owner of the contents of a book. The intellectual owner of the content of a book. Take for example my students. I might write a book, I might not have the money to publish or print that book. Sister Irene Kokodai who is a good friend of mine, I remember her name, can come to me because her father is financially buoyant and tell me, Master Wilson, let us publish this your book that you've written. Does that mean if Irene Kogodine publishes this book, she is the owner of the intellectual content of the book? The answer is no, my student. I am the intellectual owner of the content of that information bearing material. So I am the author of the book. So when you visit the library, if you know the name of the author, if you know the title of the book, it helps. Because sometimes there are some particular book you might be looking for. You might not know the name, the title of the book, but you might know the name of the author. It helps you locating that information resources in the library. And books are good examples of information bearing material that you see names of author. We move to the next one, which is a journal. Whether you like it or not, as a student, you will come across journal and you must use journals. At this level, we are inculcating in you the habit of reading journals because these journals have been written by professionals, by professionals in your field. If you are in, if you are in an accounting department, you have your own departmental journals that have been written by professionals, by experts. So it is good as a student to start reading journals in your various departments so you can have an in-depth knowledge about what your discipline is all about. What is my definition here <coughs> regarding a journal? I say a journal is published by an institution or a professional society, association in which researchers write about the result of their work to their peer community, just like what I told you, to their what peer community. If you are accounting, journals in accounting will write about their peer community, which are accounting students. If you are in library department, we have our own journals that write about our happenings regarding what library and information science. So journals contain professional information. It refers to scholarly publication and medium for reporting or disseminating research findings by scholars. Journals are primary information source and are published on a regular basis. Examples of journals is NASA Journal of Library and Information Science. Even from the name of the journal, you can see it is professionalized because it is associated with my own department. You can see journals of accounting, you can see journals of agriculture, like that. So journals 
are meant for what professionals are and they treat professional topics. So as a good student, you should visit the library and pick up a journal, which is one of what library sources you will see. And you should know what a journal is being used for. Another one is this paper which I've talked about. A newspaper is scheduled publication containing news, current events, informative articles, diverse features, editorial advertising. This is usually printed on relative, inexpensive, low-grade papers known as the newsprint. This publication is issued periodically, usually on a daily or weekly basis. Like that, we have different kinds of journals. We have this day, we have Vanguard, like that. All these newspapers, the library has deemed it fit to what to purchase all these papers for our students. So, my students, if you are not visiting the library, you are not reading newspapers, you are not reading journals, you are really wasting your time in this university. You have the pamphlet, which I told you is what is an unbounded booklet consisting of what, a single sheet of paper that is printed on both sides. And I told you that it is what less than what 49 page. So, any information resources that is less than 49 page is referred to as what well, pamphlet then you have cartographic materials these are objects used in representing the whole head like your map they are known as what well, geographic sources like your map your atlas your your plans your globes your charts we have such materials in the library also and they contain information that can satisfy the information needs of users now Having known these examples from the definition, I have told you that the format of library resources they are in two. They are in printed resources and non-printed resources. They are documented and non-documented. So we we'll look at we we'll look at printed resources just like the way you know, and you've been hearing it from your secondary school. They refer to you as hard copies, hard ways. Hard copies are those ones you can see physically and touch and feel the same thing to your printed materials are those physical information in the library that you can see and touch in the library. So those are the printed resources. Why the non-printed resources? Those are the ones that are in electronic formats. They are usually in what? Electronic format. Non-print resources information are not in printed format. They are product of what? Advanced technology. Because whether you like with me, my fellow students, the world is going globalized. We are going to a 21st century era. And thank God our university is a 21st century university. Whether you like it or not, we are already part of it. If you are still sitting in this my class listening to me, you are thinking we are not part of it. What did you use in writing your exams last semester? You used CBT, which is part of the trend. So, with this, the library is also moving along with this trend. That is why you don't just see hard copies information resources. You also see what? Electronic resources. Because before now, many a times, many students, when you tell them, won't you go to the library, they will tell you, ah, I don't want to go and read the book, I don't want to. No, the library is more than that. The library houses information resources, both in what printed format and also in what electronic format. That is why when you visit the library, we have different sections. We have a section that is meant for digitalized sections. We have the e-library that houses electronic resources such as your e-journals, your database, your e-books, and the rest. So my students, don't just be left out. Visit the library. Make use of the resources. If you are tired of reading book, go to the electronic section, go to the digitalized sections where you can have electronic materials. We'll look at the examples of printed materials. Don't forget, those books, those journals, those newspapers, those magazines I've talked about, they are all examples of printed materials. Printed materials are those physical information bearing materials you can see and touch. So newspapers, you can see our newspapers. Even if we know that they are electronic newspapers, we which are on the underside of non-electronic materials or non-book materials. So we want to look at the underside, the under examples of what non-printed material, non-book material, non-documented material. And they include audio, visual, and audiovisual. Uh, they are also called electronic or digital resources. When we talk about audio, we talk about audio materials. We are talking about those information resources. You can get information from them through the hearing of their sounds. 
when we're talking about visual materials those information resources in the library you can get information from them through visualization then we have the one they call audiovisual which is the which is the global of them all which is which which is what we are using in this era and i tell students you've not visited the library but you are using my products those of you listening to me holding my products using an android phone using a smartphone you are carrying my library along as long as you are having a smartphone you have a library a library can be an online platform a digitalized library a web 2.0 as long as it's an information bearing material that can satisfy your information needs. Some of you use the search engines to search for a particular information. Some of you, you visit websites to look for a particular information. Another good example of audiovisual you have your database. Your database which are available where you can get different information resources. When you come to the library, especially the e-library of the university, Central Library, the database that are available are pasted. It's for you, our students. When you visit there, it's for you to visit all this database to get information resources that will benefit you. Because as a good student, after being taught in class, you are supposed to go to the library to build upon what you've been taught by your lecturers. You don't just leave what you've been taught and come back to class and write scanty and scanty. No, the library is there for you to build on the knowledge you've been given by your what? By your lecturer. Your websites are there. You know, websites they have current information, overview of topics. Whether you like it or not, most of us on daily basis we visit different websites. And by the grace of God, by the era of our online lectures, you also visit our websites such as our LMS, where you get information, where you watch these videos, where you watch our clips. So there are many of them that gives you this information. So the library is not left out. We have our search engine that on daily basis you visit. A good example of our search engine is your Google, your Bingo, your ads.com, your mama.com. I know some of you is only Google, but there are many search engines. But the key of it is that you are looking for a particular information, and this database they are providing you with this what information that's what satisfies the information need of my students. You can agree with me that my student that that phone you are carrying is my library. So you are using my product. So you should continue using it. You should advance. You should visit the library for other library resources also. Then we have the library database, which are one of the fundamentals of every university library. The database, they contain millions of resources. A library database is a searchable electronic index collection of published reliable sources, such as journals, magazines, reports, thesis, dissertation, books, images, conference, to, to name, many, name as many as you want. Books of review, multimedia that can be provide that can provide access to worlds of useful research, not available on Google or the common public web, but available in this database. Examples of these databases you have: we have the Science Direct, we have the EBSCOs, we have the Jex, the Jexto, we have the Eric, we have the Economics Bees, we have Lessons Nurses. There are many of them. This database, the houses information resources from different angles they do what they call collection of data and these databases can be accessed from different angles even the library catalog houses different information resources and this is what ict has brought to us that is the trend ict is bringing to us so we should be able to what make use of what these resources that are available if you come to the library we have various databases that have been subscribed by the university but if you don't visit the library, there's no how you can know all these things. There's no how you can have access to it. Because there are higher advantage when you have the login details of these things. There are some materials you can download when you have login details. In summary, library resources appear in different formats in order to serve the information needs of library users. The two formats of library resources are printed and non-printed materials. And remember I told you, <clears throat> from the beginning of the class that printed materials and non-printed materials are also called documented and non-documented and they are also called electronic and non-electronic materials 
And they also call book and non-book materials. So the library decide on which format of this library resources to be used to satisfy their information needs of their user. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you. See you next week. I believe you've learned a lot from this class. Thank you very much for listening, my students. I would like to tell you and advise you to visit the library and pick a resource and make use of it this week. So next week when I come, I would like to hear your experience. I'd like you to drop your, 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 your questions, your experience of what you experienced when you were using one of these resources. Thank you very much and remain blessed.